Yo, it's Wednesday, so you know what it is, what it do, what it is. I am the Grizz, of course. Welcome back to Yesterday Today. I know y'all thought that your boy was probably done taking a break, but on Friday's video, I definitely stated that I may or may not make a video on Monday, so you already knew what it was, right? But now you know that your boy is still back, and we got some excellent stuff to talk about, and that switch leak, it, it happened again, and we might get to see, well, or hear at least, really more so about the switch itself, and we got some other news, so let's get right into it. All right, so I want to start off today with Tesla. Yeah, I know, Tesla, a car company, right? This is a gaming channel. Well, we know that some Teslas can run some games because I remember a couple years back they were talking about getting Cuphead on Teslas. That's pretty awesome as it is, right? Well, what would you say if I told you that the new S and X models would be able to run basically PS5 games? Yeah, seriously, in your car. The self-driving car, you could probably sit back, pick up a controller, and play PS5 games. Not PS5 games per se, but PS5 level powered games. So I was just, you know, of course, searching around the web, and I went to, to Tech Radar, and here's just a little bit of what they said. At AMD's Computex 2021 keynote, the chip maker confirmed that the latest generation of Tesla's infotainment system that's inside the car, arriving in both the new Tesla Model S and X, hmm, Xbox Series S, Xbox Series X, yeah, okay, just just, just saying, is powered by an AMD Ryzen processor, an AMD RDNA2 GPU. Now, if you're like me, you're not really fluent in PC, even though I play on a PC and stuff like that. Thank God I got the right people around me, but it also says those internal suggest Musk's an in-car gaming rig is capable of providing up to 10 teraflops of computing power, which isn't far off the figure boasted in Sony's PS5. What? In a car. Seriously. Just because. Because, you know, what in the cheese on bread? What in the de Demolition Man, Total Recall, and all other futuristic movies that I can't think of right now? Johnny Mnemonic? This is crazy to me. First of all, it's already crazy to have a Tesla. Whatever. Everybody's getting Teslas. They're probably becoming a little more affordable, but they just keep getting better. They're like phones. You know, some people are like, oh, this has all of the amenities and cars, but does, can your car play PS5 level games? Seriously. This is really, really interesting to me, and I'm afraid to see where we're going, but I'm also very, very intrigued. All right, so now let's talk Dark Horse Comics, and I know what you're thinking. Once again, this is a gaming channel. Not a comic book channel, not a channel about cars, but I promise you there is a method to my madness. So Dark Horse Comics now made a division dedicated to games and digital called Dark Horse Games, and they had an exclusive interview with Games Beat, and they broke it down on Venture Beat, and here's what it says. Dark Horse Comics has stated Dark Horse Games as its new gaming and digital division. With two main offices in Oregon and Shanghai, Dark Horse Games will create games through licensing partnerships with external game developers as well as its own in-house first-party properties. The company will start bringing some of its 425 story-driven characters and universes to video games, said Dark Horse Games General Manager John Johnny Lee. Now, that's crazy, right? Just imagine you get a 300 game. Because this is from Dark Horse. So you get a game based off of 300. Kind of already got that with Rise of the Rome, But nevertheless. Or an Umbrella Academy game. That would be a really, really interesting game. I don't think they can pull that off as like some action adventure game. Unless somehow they get it to make sense. Because it really varies. Because the way those that TV show. Because I haven't read the comics. But the way the TV show plays out. It's pretty cerebral. Kind of really like a thriller kind of TV show. And then, of course, Sin City. Now, that's even probably one of the most interesting ones. I would love to see a Sin City game. Maybe give us something in that universe. Give us a black and white game with the real pretty HD aesthetics. And maybe have your boy Murph narrate the whole game. And maybe the final boss be Elijah Wood's character. And if you lose, he eats your fingers. Seriously, this is really, really interesting. And I'm happy for Dark Horse Games. And, of course, we can get another Hellboy game. Now, this is, wouldn't be his first foray into games. I remember the Hellboy game that came out during the Xbox 360 era. I remember it being a pretty okay game. It was very Devil May Cry-ish, and that's fine. Um, but then, also, he was in Injustice. So, why not? I love Hellboy. Never read the comics, but I actually love the new movie, believe it or not. 
Okay, shout out to David Harbour. He put on all the, he put on all that makeup and got in crazy shape. And y'all shamed the movie. That movie was fly. Anyway, yeah, shout out to Dark Horse Games. Well, Xbox Game Pass has officially announced the Game Pass editions for June. And hey, one of them isn't even out yet. All right, so we're gonna go to the cloud version of the Wild at Heart, a puzzle game. Uh, For Honor is now on cloud and console, and I do believe that was on Game Pass before. Now on cloud console, NPC Darkest Dungeon, a roguelite uh, game with RPG turn-based RPG elements, and Backbone, which is a detective game with anthropomorphic animals. Now, if it wasn't one of them detective games, regardless, you you had me, you had me at anthropomorphic animals, seriously, because. I'm enjoying Biomutant like a whole lot. And you give me more of these anthropomorphic animals where it's supposed to be serious, but the animals are cute. Well, I just find that kind of world charming. But let's get into those dates. June 1st, The Wild at Heart will officially be on cloud. June 3rd for Honor, Cloud, and Console, which will be tomorrow. June 8th is Backbone on PC. And June 10th is Darkest Dungeon on Cloud, Console, and PC. Now, of course, when you got games coming in, you got games coming out. And officially leaving on June 15th is Ace Combat 7, Skies Unknown, which is on Console. Night Call, Cloud, Console, and PC. West of Dead, Cloud, Console, and PC, which is actually a pretty solid roguelike, I, I kind of say. I, the only reason I played it is because it was on Game Pass. Uh, Wizard of Legend, Cloud Console and PC, and then this one is Mad Fire. Very, very dope. I actually played a fair amount of time, maybe about five, seven out to seven hours playing this game. And this game is actually very, very fun. And then Observation, Cloud Console and PC, all leaving on June 15th. Now, of course, every month you get perks, and those perks are Dirt 5. Uh, that's available immediately. Super Animal Royale Founders Edition Pack available immediately. And Apex Legends Knockout City Weapon Charm available on June 3rd, which is tomorrow. So, now, hey, this isn't one of my most favorite months. I don't think I'm really going to play any of these games. I played some of For Honor when it first came out, and I know I should probably eventually jump back in. But it's one of those games that just ain't for me. These games ain't for me. But you know what? It's over 100 other games that probably is for me. So, once again, shout out to Game Pass. And if you don't have Game Pass right now, and you have a cell phone, if you have a cell phone, you can play the cloud games. Okay? And then if you have a PC, you can play the PC side in cloud. And then, of course, if you have an Xbox, you can just play everything. So, if you don't have Game Pass for some reason, you can start off with just one dollar. Seriously, they didn't pay me to say that. This is just such a great deal. So y'all know I'm in the first person shooters, right? Y'all know that, right? Crisis is definitely one of them. They are remastering the rest of the Crisis franchise. Last year around September, we got a remaster of the first Crisis. I didn't even buy it on purpose. I'm starting to learn to wait for things. What's exciting about this is because EA isn't the ones publishing it. This is due to a partnership with Saber Interactive, you know, the people that do Saints Row, and Crytek. We are getting a remaster later this year of 2 and 3, and it will be giving us a trilogy bundle, and they will be releasing it on all consoles, right? But before I say anything else, let's read, let's go to the official blog post, and it says, Crytek today announced that the Crisis Remastered Trilogy will launch for consoles and PC this fall. The Crisis Remastered Trilogy features the single-player remasters of Crisis 1, 2, and 3, optimized in partnership with Saber Interactive for today's console and PC hardware. The three-game bundle will be available on PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, and for PC. And I feel like the way they worded that sentence was, you know, just for the Pro, because they the, the Pro isn't officially revealed yet, the Switch Pro. Because then in the very next sentence, it says, the three-game bundle... Uh, sorry, uh, with the game playing even smoother on next-gen PS5 and Xbox Series XS. Okay, I just feel like the word is a little finicky there. Crisis Remastered is available for these platforms now. And the remasters of Crisis 2 and 3 will also be made available separately. But you can also buy the bundle. I'm very excited about this because I, I, I don't want to say that you can never have enough first-person shooters, but maybe at least creative ones because well we don't really have them we just got call of duty and stuff like that right we don't really have a lot of different we got doom yes absolutely but crisis you can harden your suit or go invisible and jump high and run super fast 
become bulletproof. As you can tell, I'm very excited. And the fact that I'm going to probably buy this. No, not probably. First of all, I want to say Crytek, Saber Interactive, release the steel case version, please. Seriously. Because if you get this, I will buy it on both systems. Both the PS5 steel case and the Nintendo Switch steel case. I'm dumb enough to do it. But are y'all smart enough to put that out there so I can give you my money? I have the money. I just want to give it to you. Give me the steel case version. All right, so this is a really, really quick one. Get excited because we are finally going to see Battlefield 6 or just Battlefield June 9th at 7 a.m. PDT and 11 a.m. on our time. E E D E P E S T. So I'm excited because I'm actually kind of wondering why this 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 frame is kind of like in a 480p thing. Are they doing a 1980? Oh gosh, I really hope they're not doing a 19 because it looks like a cassette video kind of thing going on, and it's, it kind of looks like all of the you know the stuff that you used to see for the cassette, right? But I'm I'm hoping they're not doing a 1980s themed game because that's what Black Ops was. You stay away from what Call of Duty is doing. Do your own thing. Just keep it Battlefield-esque. And I think Battlefield could make a comeback. People have been waiting for Battlefield to come back. So I'm excited to hear about it. And I can't wait to see it. And if you're a Battlefield fan, like you are my boy Victor, let me know down in the comments below. All right, so let's finish up today talking some Nintendo Switch Pro. I know, before it was months, then it was weeks. Now it's literally days that we just constantly keep hearing about this Nintendo Switch revision, a, Nintendo, a possible Nintendo Switch Pro, right? But now we're hearing that it's going to be revealed this week. Seriously. So a popular Nintendo Switch leaker on over on Twitter definitely put something out and they said, we have received and verified a screenshot from a big retailer's internal system that shows on a new Switch hardware related listing will go live on June 4th around midnight. That's all we have for now. There's no other data attribute in the listing right now. So they also said that's around CST. So eh, give or take maybe around three, four o'clock around Eastern Standard Time, that kind of thing. So um, you know, give or take, correct me in the comments, of course, but I'm really, really interested. If we're gonna hear it this week, maybe even today, maybe even before this video goes up, and I have no idea, this drops every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 p.m. And I think maybe if anything, Nintendo will tweet around that time. But maybe they'll announce, hey, listen, we're gonna have a Nintendo Switch Pro reveal, or whatever they call it, Super Switch, Super Nintendo Switch, whatever. It's gonna be revealed Thursday. And then, just like how Nintendo does, you can start pre-ordering it now. So if we pre-order it now, June 4th, and then we don't get it until like November, this gives them enough time to at least be able to control the traffic. If we are able to pre-order it June 4th, and the pre-orders crash the internet, as they always do, they can get an idea of how much people want this. And I think they already do. Because people who love the Switch like me still kind of complain about how underpowered it is. And they know that people like me, who knows that the moment they announce this, in the moment that they say it's available for pre-order, my thumb is going crazy and I'm clicking it. I am so excited. Don't play with me no more. No more emotions. I need y'all to announce the Nintendo Switch Pro, show some old games, play in order, or maybe one new game. And then at E3, you show it to us again. And Metroid Prime Trilogy is on there. Seriously, stop playing. This ain't funny no more. Okay? This ain't funny. When the system launches in November, you have to give us Breath of the Wild 2. And then in February, you give us Metroid Prime Trilogy. Something. Please. I'm so excited for this Nintendo. Please be real. Let me know in the comments down below if you are just as excited as me. All right, lads and ladders, that is it for today. Thank y'all so much for tuning in, and I really hope that you are enjoying these videos, because if you are, go ahead and hit that like button if you haven't already. If not, hit the dislike, it's all good. But if you are new here, hit that red subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you know when your boy is posting. But just in case, if you're wondering when I'm posting, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm posting every week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, bringing you some of the biggest gaming news you may have missed from yesterday to today, and sometimes I might post a bonus video. Keep an eye out for that one. But for now, though, that's it for this one. This video is finito.